another really important concept we need to discuss with uh, functions is about domain and range and identifying the domain and range for a function. We've already defined the domain of our function as being the set of inputs which are along the x-axis, right? Those are our x values. And the range are the outputs or the y values. Now let's look at this picture over here. This picture says that the domain of this blue line, which is a function, the domain or the possible x values are only going to be occurring between these two places on the x-axis. So only the numbers that are occurring between these two lines are going to be found in ordered pairs along this x-axis. So if I have some number right here, let's call that number, I don't know, 5, and I were to go up and find out what that point is on this graph, then the ordered pair would be represented by the number 5 from the x-axis and its corresponding y value from over here. And we'll call that, I don't know, 10. So the domain gives me all of the x values that are occurring in this function and the range gives me all of the y values that are occurring in this function. Let's go look at this example I have right here. This tells me that I have the function um, f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 4. And if I only want to talk about the domain, which again are the possible x values, what values along the x-axis um, are allowed or will be occurring in my graph. I've started the, um, the, the figure already because I want you to see that if I am right here on the x-axis where my pointer is, then there, this is the corresponding point on the graph. Okay, And I can continue looking at this function, I can continue moving around and you can see that if I am right here on the x-axis then this is the point that's occurring on my graph. Let's keep going and you can see that if I am right here on the x-axis, again this is the point on my graph and let's get to the point I want to show you. Now all of a sudden I don't see a point on the graph anymore, but does that mean that there is uh, no more x values occurring here? No, it doesn't. Because this graph goes off to infinity in this direction, we are still going to have values that are uh, showing up on the graph. It's just outside of our window, let's call it. Okay, so if I am at 4 over here, on the x-axis and I were to follow that down and I had enough room on my graph, I would be able to see where that point occurred on my function. So because this function is moving off to infinity this direction, then my domain is going to continue off to infinity in that direction. And the same thing would occur if I started over. Here, my uh, function the, the number line is only starting at negative 8, okay? And so we just have to picture the fact that my ordered pair or my point is going to somewhere meet up with this graph way, way down where I can't see it. And because this graph goes off to infinity in that direction, then we have x values that would be occurring on the graph in the negative infinity direction as well. So you can see that, I'm going to slide it again, and we're going along. Now I can, just because it's in my uh, window, my range for the window, I can see the point. But now it's outside of my range and I still have uh, a graph that's appearing there. Notice that we can write the domain in this notation right here, which would be um, set notation, where x is between negative and positive infinity. But most of the time we represent the domain in interval notation, which says from negative to positive infinity. Now what if I want to talk about the range? Remember the range are the possible y values. So y values, well, we read uh, usually negative to positive. Well, that's how we're going to think. So if I talk about possible y values, my graph is only showing me the y values from negative 5 up to 4. 
but because this graph is moving off to infinity uh, outside of the range of my window, I just have to understand that the, the possible negative values are to infinity, right? They're, they're much farther down on this graph than I would ever see. So if I were to slide this along, you can see, oh, now I have ordered pairs that are appearing. Here I go, and I'm going to keep moving up the y-axis. But what happens as soon as I get to the number 4? The graph stops, doesn't it? So the graph is actually going to come up, stop at negative 4, change directions, and go back down. I am never, ever going to get higher than a positive 4. If I hope that's what I was saying. I'm never going to get higher than 4 on the y-axis for this graph. For that reason, the range of the function looks like, oops, the range of the function looks like, oops, I guess I can't move it. The range of the function looks like from negative infinity, right? Because this graph is going off in the uh, y, in the negative y direction forever. So it's negative infinity up to and including the number 4. So this is how we would represent it using our interval notation. Let's look at another function just to be sure we understand this. Um, how about I choose, well, let's look at this one. This is a piecewise function, and we want to talk about the domain of the function. Domains, again, are along the x-axis. So what are the values that are allowed in uh, my possible x values that, that are going to be allowed in the function that would be occurring as ordered pairs on my graph? So if I were to slide this bar along, you can see that uh, we are we have points that are occurring all along that line. Oops, sorry. We have points that are occurring all along that line until I get to negative 2. Now notice that negative 2 is an open circle. Negative 2 as an open circle in this graph says that at this point right here, the point, what would that be? Negative 2, 1, the ordered pair, negative 2, 1. Open circles mean I cannot include that in my domain. So the negative 2 up here doesn't count. It's not allowed in my function. However, down here, notice that we skipped over or we jumped from one function at negative 2, so the top line, all the way down to the bottom line. So at negative 2, we changed from this graph to this graph down here. And that's kind of defined for us over here. But we're at negative 2 up here, and we jump down here to negative 2. This down here is indicating that negative 2 is allowed in this function, and we can keep right on going. And you can see the ordered pair or the points sliding along that line, and they're going to go off into infinity. Now, why is the domain of this function, oh, I did it again, sorry. Why is the domain of this function being shown here, all the possible x values, from negative to positive infinity, when I cannot include the negative 2 up here, and I can include the negative 2 down here? Well, that's because although I don't include an x value of negative 2 up here, I can include it down here. So one way or the other, negative 2 is going to be allowed. It just depends on which function you're looking at. So the domain of this particular function is negative to positive infinity. What do you suppose the range of this function is going to be? The range of the function is all of the possible y values. So if we were just looking at this function right here, what is the lowest place on the graph that we have, um, or where is the lowest place that the graph starts on the y-axis? Well, I can see that the function starts down here at negative 3. There are no values for y that are going to be below negative 3. Yet these arrows up here on the ends of my line are indicating that my lines are going to go off and keep getting higher and higher in the y direction. So I believe that the range of the function is going to be from negative 3 to infinity. Let's see if, that, if this supports that. Yep, we've got ordered pairs that are occurring. 
and they are going to move off into infinity and you can see that the range for the function would be from negative 3 inclusive, right? I can include that negative 3 off to infinity. So domain and range are sometimes difficult concepts to grasp but um, this figure is actually found in the um, on the website on our math my math lab website so I encourage you to play around with it